Can you guess what the number one question was that people asked me in the comments of my videos? Well, if you said, how can I connect my digital piano, MIDI controller or launchpad to my iPad, then you're correct. So the answer is coming right up. First, let's talk about dongles. And this is mostly relevant for the iPad with lightning ports, because the other ones have USB-C and for that all you need is a standard USB hub. But what if you have one with a lightning port and you want to connect something with USB? Generally spoken, you have two options. This here is a third-party adapter, very cheap, and also it has no power, just the USB port. This here is an adapter by Apple. It has power and a USB port. So for what do you need what? First of all, if you buy the cheap one, there's a high risk that it will simply stop working at any point in time without further notice after an update. This has happened to me before. Funny enough, this one stopped working, then started working again. You never know. On the other hand, the Apple ones will work every time and they won't be deactivated by Apple with an update. The problem though is that they are kind of expensive. This one costs 30 euros, which is outrageous for a piece of plastic that probably cost a euro in production. Also, and this is the same for Apple and third-party adapters, is that you can have one with power and one without power. So generally spoken, if your device needs power, you will need this one. So this is definitely the safer option. If you're absolutely certain that your device has external power, for example, a digital piano, this one will be enough. Alright, so that's it about adapters. If you ask me, I would get the expensive Apple one because you buy it once and then you will have it forever. If you have the adapter, all you have to do is attach it to the lightning port and that's it, you're ready to go. So next up, what kind of cable do you need for the device that you have? So here are the most common port options. The left one is a so-called USB to host port, also referred as to the printer cable. So technically spoken, this is a USB A to USB B cable, very cheap available on Amazon and also provides power, so very practical. This one will be mostly found on MIDI devices like this one here, this small MIDI controller, but it's also very common on digital pianos, keyboards and everything that is something like that. On the right side, we have something that is called the file pin MIDI port. This is also very common and if you want to attach something with that to the iPad you need something like this. This is a 5 pin MIDI to USB cable. Those are medium expensive. I think I paid 20 bucks for this on Amazon and the only thing that you have to know is that this here is labeled MIDI out so you have to find the cable that is labeled MIDI in. I don't know if you can see this here but you always connect MIDI out to MIDI in and then the other part which is just a standard USB you plug into the iPad and that's already it. You're pretty much done. This is also very common especially with older digital pianos, older synthesizers that don't have a USB to host connection but a lot of them will at least have a MIDI connection. All right so here we have a different MIDI controller. Because it's very slim it only has a USB-C port this works the same basically as the USB to host port that we saw before. So this works the same as the printer cable. The only difference is that you need a standard USB-C to USB-A cable. On the right side we again have some MIDI ports, but those are small versions of the MIDI ports. Usually devices that have the small MIDI ports will come with something that converts the small MIDI port to a larger regular MIDI port, aka another dongle. So I connected my iPad to one of my devices now. To keep it simple, I chose something that has power on its own. So all I had to do was put the dongle into the iPad and the USB into the dongle. And that's actually already it. Your iPad should recognize the MIDI device and should be ready to go. If you're unsure, there's a free app called MIDI Wrench that you can download and there you can see if MIDI data is sent to your iPad. So for example, if I press a key on the Cobalt now, you will see that I get MIDI data that relates to the key that I have pressed. This is useful because for example Simply Piano doesn't really tell you much about how the connection works and for example Flow Key tells you close to nothing but if it receives MIDI data here everything is good and everything will work and that's already it. If you found this video useful you know the drill hit the like button ring the bell subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye have a great week.